Hello YouTube, this is Charter Yu-Gi-Oh! And today for my third video on making the small money in Yu-Gi-Oh! I want to talk about the dollar binders. Or dollar binder. And we've already talked about the main trade binder and the secondary trade binder. And now I'm just going to tell you about my dollar binder and how I manage it. And as I said on the first video, the dollar binder is where most of my money in Yu-Gi-Oh! comes from. Like this, these three mini binders here probably make me more actual cash than my main binder and my secondary trade binder combined. Now, in the dollar binder, you just put basically cards you value around a dollar. Now, as we said earlier, the main trade binder should be used primarily online and the secondary trade binder should be used primarily at locals. These binders are one that you can use anywhere because there are cards that will be purchased both places. Now, what I like to put in my dollar binder personally are either just bad hollows like pack hollows such as Red Dragon Ninja or Feng Huang that aren't really worth much but they're still hollows and can still be valued around a dollar. At least I think they can, especially at locals. And common staples. Now common staples are much more likely to be moved online. And the advantage you have here is that these are generally very easy to pick up. I don't know about your locals, but around my locals, common staples are traded around very freely. Mostly because anyone who already plays there and has been playing there for a long time will already have all of the staples that he or she needs. Now, the advantage you have there is that you can pick these up very cheaply. And the demand for these is much greater online, especially around a dollar, because typical retail stores sell them for about two or three. And I can't imagine anyone ever paying something like that for a common staple. So, my suggestion is to put a lot of common staples and pick them up at your locals as cheaply as possible. Like, I traded for a huge stack. I think it was, like, that big for my locals yesterday. I think I had, like, 64 or something. Some ridiculous number of common staples. But And I have them all stockpiled either in these binders or in the dresser over there. Now, you don't necessarily even have to rip people off for them. Like, give people what they're worth, but they're much easier to move. I've made, now, another advice thing that I have is to get a PayPal, because it's much easier for people to pay you on PayPal, and I've made about, well, there was this one guy who bought, like, a hundred common staples for me at a time, and so I got, like, a hundred dollars in PayPal from that, and now most people just go for small orders, like, six, seven, eight dollars, and that adds up very quickly, especially if you take PayPal gifts. Now, for selling on YouTube out of the dollar miners, I only accept PayPal gifts because I already have a ridiculous number of refs. I have like over 60 completed trades and that number is constantly growing. I have three, four, five trades a week for anyone who watches my trade proofs. So I am a very trustworthy trader and I have never had an issue with people refusing to send to me a PayPal gift simply because of a lack of references or because they don't trust me. Now, that might be an issue. Maybe you will get more people if you accept an act a PayPal payment versus a PayPal gift, but it's never been an issue for me. And that's also an easy way to spend money online. You can transfer to your bank account if you have a debit card, or there's just lots of things you can do. Now, again, as with the other two binders, what you put in your dollar binder versus what you put in your secondary binder or even your main binder is completely up to you. That's very arbitrary. Just whatever th you think you can move for what. Just like, and you can you sell the dollar, the dollar binders at locals. I do sell out of the dollar binders at locals, but it's primarily online, which is where I make most of my sales. And that's just because that just happens to be where they are. It's not from a lack of effort. Now, generally, I try to insist on cash only for the dollar binders. That's also completely up to you. If you want to trade out of them, you can. But I like to make sure that I'm making a little cash. Because I can profit card value all I want very easily. But making cash is a lot more difficult. So I generally insist on cash only. Just to ensure that I am actually getting a little cash each time I go to locals. And also, that keeps it less negotiable. Most people aren't going to be willing to give up a high-value card, even if they're trading for, like, 20 of your common staples at a time, because that's trading down. So if you get cash, it's much easier to maintain the values and just be very strict on the values. If you're trading, it's more difficult. People will try to negotiate with you. 
and personally for me, when you're talking about cards that are worth about one or to two dollars a piece, it's just not worth the time and effort required to negotiate with them. So I always recommend insisting on cash only for dollar binders, but that's completely up to you. If they want to trade with you, hand them one of your trade binders and you can work out something for there. And then finally, you have cards like these, Venus Chain and Solemn Warning. Now these are obviously worth a lot more than a dollar. However, most like most of the staples, most people are already going to have these. So you're going to have a very difficult time moving these on locals or even trading them out of your trade binders. This is especially true if they're like these two, which are slightly played. Now, for slightly played cards like these, they're still worth about, say, $4, 4 or $5 a piece. Then, my suggestion for these is to take these to eBay. On eBay, you have a much e better chance of moving these cards and turning them for cash. Now, I only use eBay for a last resort because eBay does charge fees and that will take a hit out of your out of what you receive for the cards. But if you absolutely can't move them anywhere and you don't want to put them in your dollar binder, I would suggest taking them to eBay. And I might I'm going to do another video on how to move cards specifically and what works for me, but that'll be in a later video. So for now just post any suggestions you have below and peace out YouTube.